Cricket, our national treasure. Or dying irrelevance. Bodyline, tactical genius. Or national disgrace. The hundred. Inspired innovation or misguided mistake. Join the cricket conversation with a subscription to the Cricketer magazine. Welcome to the Quarantine Cup this Sunday afternoon and a game between two of the sides who have struggled so far in the tournament. In fact, both Nottinghamshire and Warwickshire go into this match eliminated from the competition, so nothing but pride to play for today. Tom Moores particularly has found going tough. He began the competition saying he was without weakness on Cricket 19. There are none, he told us. He had a backlog of experience on cricket games, but it's all gone wrong. Three defeats out of three, just like Dan Mosley, the youngest in the pack. He struggled at the start of the competition with his batting. It has got better, but he's come up against strong opposition in the shape of Gloucestershire and Hampshire, and he hasn't been able to create the results that he would have wanted pre-tournament. So the two players, both out, both looking to get something on the board. As you can see, they're sitting there with zero points from three games each. Right, time for the action, so let's get across to your commentator, who today is Henry Moran. Well, hello and welcome to another game from the Quarantine Cup. It's a Group 1 fixture between Notts, who are visiting the Birmingham Bears. Both sides without hope of qualification for the latter stages of this competition, but plenty of pride to play for. For Tom Moores in charge of the controllers for Nottinghamshire and Down Mousley, the young batsman for Warwickshire, who's in charge today of the Birmingham Bears. Speaking ahead of this game, Tom said he's looking for a new tactical approach for Notts. His side have been bowled out for 9 and 17 in the last couple of innings. Dan has noted the members at Warwickshire starting to get a little bit restless here at Edgbaston. And they could do with a result today. Two captains out in the middle. Jeetan Patel tosses the coin. And as watching on, Steve Mullaney sees it land in the favour of the Birmingham Bears. What will Jeetan Patel elect to do? Well, the Birmingham Bears are going to have a bat first. That's the decision in the sunshine at Edgbaston. Two sides have been really disappointed in this tournament so far. We expected big things from Moores, particularly. Mousley, well, he's got experience of playing cricket games on the computer. Brian Lara Cricket, Ashes 2009. So he's got the experience but it's yet to show in terms of performances. How will he fare today? First delivery, yep. and he's striking the pads. Is there an appeal early? Well, there is. What are they going to say? The umpire says no, but there is that one review available. So will that be taken? The discussions between Luke Fletcher, who's opening the bowling, Steve Mullaney and Dan Christian. Well, in the end, the decision is no. Big LBW shout. Not given, not reviewed. 
Ed Pollock on strike. He goes big down the ground. Is that going to be the first six of the game? I think it will be, yeah, over long on. Big six. Straight down the ground over the city end. And they're up and running. The Birmingham Bears, they like that here at Edgbaston. It's six runs down the ground. Six without loss. And maybe they'll be feeling that LBW shot. It was worth a review. Luke Fletcher certainly looks convinced. Ed Pollock, well, he's not hanging around. No time to do that in five over cricket. Next delivery. Worked into the leg side. Could be more runs. Should be four, I think. Yet yeah, through mid wicket it goes out towards the Holly stand. And it's another boundary. And Pollock just working the angle and showing immaculate timing. A little conversation takes place in between the skipper and Luke Fletcher. He's now ready to bowl once again. Ten without loss is the score. Three deliveries gone in this quarantine cup fixture. Good start this from Dan Mousley at the controls for the Birmingham Bears. Tom Moores, well, he's changing the angle of attack. Will this bear fruit for Nottinghamshire? It's Pollock on strike. Hit in the air. Could be a chance of a catch. Fielder running round. And it should be taken. It is. Good catch over the head. First wicket falls. That change of angle works and Fletcher celebrates. Not quite timed as the previous couple of deliveries had been. Up in the air it went. Work to do for the fielder running round. But dropping out of that blue sky, the catch is taken. And Alex Hales, not always the most convincing pair of hands in the deep, but does well on this occasion. Ed Pollock goes for 10. Luke Fletcher with the wicket. And an early breakthrough that just puts a little bit of pressure on the batting side. Well, Ian Bell was listed at 11 on that scorecard, but he is batting at three. That looks a little bit more like it in terms of a batting order. I was wondering whether that might have been a little bit of a mistake. But Bell won't be on strike. Dom Sibley it is. Was waiting. Cry catch it. Not going to be an opportunity, though. Thrashed away. Good-looking shot. Six runs. Flat straight down the ground it goes. And Sibley up and running immediately. The England test batsman. Well, what a performance in South Africa from him during the winter of 1920. More about blocking and accumulating from Sibley during the winter. This is all about brute force. Down the ground it goes, six runs, it's 16 for one. That would give for another wicket to finish this over, not Tom Moores. In charge of these controls, as Fletcher comes in to conclude his over. In the air it goes, should be another chance of a catch. Dan Christian's running round. Dropped, appalling. Christian, such an experienced campaigner. Really would have expected better from there. And a dramatic over concludes with a poor drop catch from Dan Christian. Of course, he's been at not so many years in T20 blast matches. Elban Renegades man in the Big Bash League winner in 2019. On this occasion, though, his experience doesn't help him out. And a poor drop. 18 for one after one over as Stuart Broad comes into the attack. Worked into the leg side. Nice looking shot from Ian Bell. That's going to run towards the ropes, and I think it's going to win the race as well out towards the holly stand. It does. Four runs to start the over. And the old England adversaries, teammates for so long for England, up against each other in this five-over format. And Stuart Broad gets a little bit of treatment from Ian Bell, showing all the class that saw those runs accumulated over the years in all the formats for England. Broad, round the wicket to Ian Bell. And leg stump, worked away again. Could be more runs, will be more runs. How many? I think that's just dropped inside the ropes. And the umpire signals exactly that. So back-to-back -back boundaries to start the over. Stuart Broad is getting just a little bit of treatment here from Ian Bell. Now all the experienced England pacemen respond. Broad has been there and done it all in an England shirt. Presenting knots here, and that's a better looking delivery. Just a little bit shorter, gets Bell in a little bit of a tangle, and you can see Broad's enthusiasm and energy. He's up for this, charging down, retrieving the ball, dislodging those bales in the process. So, dot ball to follow those two boundaries. 26 for one, the Birmingham Bears score. This is helped into the leg side. Is that going to be more runs? It could be six of them. That's brilliant timing from Ian Bell. Just a little bit straighter than we saw earlier in the over. 
but this time he gets maximum reward. Almost just a little clip, but the timing is such that it races off the face of the bat, launches down the ground. And into the stand it goes, those Birmingham Bears supporters like that. 32 for one is the score. And Stuart Broad will now come over the wicket, can he just lodge Ian Bell? Two balls left to the over, look at that stance from Bell, well outside. The leg stump, clipped into the leg side, is that going to be a boundary once more? Could be, you know, I think it is going to be, yep, more runs for Ian Bell, what an over this is. And you can see the innovation that this sort of cricket requires, standing well outside off stump, Bell just using the pace on the ball, clipping it away. And moves on to 18 from just five balls. 36 for one is the score. Broad to conclude. It's been a disappointing over. Bell chips it up. Not quite as well timed this time. Should be a catch. And there, waiting to take the opportunity, is Dan Christian. The over concludes with a wicket. So important with the sort of touch that Ian Bell's in. Dan Christian, credit to him after that drop in the previous over. And this time the opportunity's taken, and Bell has to depart. The right -handers come to bat at number four. Liam Banks comes to the middle. 20-year-old batsman. Facing the wily experience of the left-arm spin of Samit Patel. 36 for two after two overs, good start. Those two wickets will be a little bit of a concern for Dan Mousley at the controls. Samit Patel to Liam Banks, who's going big immediately. Down the ground it goes, good timing, out towards the city end. And it's six. Well, he may be facing one of the most experienced bowlers on the circuit in Samit Patel. But Liam Banks says, well, if you're going to bowl a full delivery like that right in the slot, it's going to get the treatment. What a connection. 42 for two. Perfect start to the over. Not so for Tom Moores, who's got some thinking to do here for not. Sam Patel going to continue pulling this round arm action round the wicket. Fielders in the deep, three of them. Deep square leg, deep cover and long on. Next delivery, punch gently down the ground. It is that fielder at long on who will run in, collect and throw. And it'll just be the one run, so that's a good recovery from Samit Patel, who'd be pleased to see the batsman off strike. And Sibley, who's been admiring the carnage from the other end, will face the next delivery. How's he going to try and work the angle? He's going to try something creative. He gets in position for the switch hit and's bold. That slip in place, maybe that just muddled the mind of Dom Sibley. The switch hit. Well, you've got to get it absolutely right to get any sort of connection with it. And this isn't any sort of right. Goes right through him. And Samit Patel strikes to remove Dom Sibley for eight. It's 43 for three. And that's a big breakthrough because not only does it remove a dangerous batsman, but suddenly those five wickets hove into view. If you get five wickets inside the five overs, that's the end of the innings. Midway point in this innings, 2.3 overs gone, and the Bears have lost three. Will Rhodes, new batsman, left-hander. There's a pill for every W. Is that going to be another wicket? They'll run through for something. Leg buys, runs, we'll wait and see. Umpire says no to the LBW shout. And signals that as runs. So, single for Will Rhodes immediately. And this is a really good recovery after that big six at the start of the over. Banks on strike. Samit Patel shuffling in once again. Clipped into the leg side, cautious play, worked towards square leg. And a single, a good single as well is taken. And so, Samit Patel with the opportunity to see out what's been a really excellent over. Just the nine runs conceded from it and the wicket as well. Will Rhodes will be thinking of boundary here. Well, that just swings the pendulum back in the way of the Birmingham Bears. It's going to be clipped into the leg side. That could be the boundary they're looking for. It is. Six runs. Flat over mid wicket. And out towards the Eric Holly stand. 
so quick that the complexion of an over can change. Samit Patel had bowled so well after that initial six. Got the wicket, just three runs conceded, but then the six to finish things, and suddenly it's 15 from the over. And the Birmingham Bears, Warwickshire, if you like, 51 for three. With two overs left in the innings. Here comes Dan Christian. Busy day he's had already. Banks on strike. Goes right through him. Through to the keeper. Valuable dot ball. Remains 51 for three as Christian. With no protection deep straight down the ground. And that so far, has to be said, Dan Mousley has looked at that as a profitable scoring area for the Bears. Down the ground he goes, in the air, could be a chance of a catch, it is a catch. Yeah. Hanging on is Stuart Broad and Dan Christian strikes. Liam Banks goes for eight, but it was explosive to start with from Banks. But the youngster, well a combination of two very experienced heads in Stuart Broad and Dan Christian sees his demise. 51 for four, and there could be just a little bit of trouble here for the Bears because it's so important when you've got 30 deliveries in an innings, you bat them all, because if you lose those five wickets, that's it. Adam Hose. Out to the middle he comes, 51 for four. There's still 10 balls in theory left of this innings. Dan Christian to come round the wicket. Will Rhodes on strike. Batsman somehow crossed that. And Rhodes on seven is waiting. Just delicately driving as far as mid-off, picks up a single, good running. It's an understandable play, actually, you have to say, from Mousley, who's just resisting the urge to go big. And pick up the singles, get to that final over, to the final few balls, perhaps, and then make the decision to press that button to go large. Hose to face his first ball, working it along the floor. That's a nicely timed shot, that could be a boundary. The fielder in pursuit will cut it off. It's Stuart Broad that picks up, throws left-handed, and they'll get through for a couple of runs. That's really good running. And sensible play, it's got to be said. The pressure is on here because lose another wicket, it's all over. Rhodes, not through for three, actually, there. Rhodes on strike then, driven into the offside. Goes to the right of mid-off, single is taken. So boundaries have dried up, but the scoreboard keeps on ticking over, so important. The field has to shift round again, we've got a deep backwards square, a long leg, deep cover. Big expanse of space through mid-wicket, will Hose be tempted? It's Christian moving in. It's exactly that sort of area that's targeted. Goes to the right of Stuart Broad at mid-on, throw comes in. It's not the perfect connection, and so it is just a single. And over concludes. It's a pretty decent over, it's got to be said, from Dan Christian. And the advantage that not to have here, and what Tom Moores can do, is he can turn to the experience and the quality of Harry Gurney, a bowler that is sought after and limited overs cricket around the world. He's a franchise superstar. Melbourne Renegades, Calcutta Knight Riders, he's done it all. And he's bowling this final over. Hose on strike, swinging, missing, and immediately that change up from Harry Gurney, just rolling the fingers over the ball. And getting that valuable dot. Hose, four from three, which is, in the context of this innings, pretty slow going. Got five balls left of the innings. 57 for four is the score. Gurney shuffling in again. Goes, struck on, I think, the leg as it runs down towards short fine leg. Keeper in pursuit. They'll get through for a couple of what I think will be signaled leg buys by the umpire. And indeed, a little pat of the leg tells us exactly that. So, 59 for four. Good from Gurney, this. Get the wicket, that'll be such a bonus. Hose on strike on four. Rhodes at the other end has nine. And his is a watching brief at the moment. Gurney moving in over the wicket as Hose hits the ball into the leg side. Decent timing, but there is protection in the deep, so it won't bring the boundary. In fact, it won't even bring two runs because the throw is good into the keeper who's standing back, not up to the stumps. 
and the score 60 for four. In theory, we've got three balls left of this innings. Gurney desperate to conclude it as soon as possible if he can. Rhodes on strike. Goes for a bigger looking shot this time. Fielder running in from the deep. Could be a chance of a catch, and it is. That's the end of the innings. They don't quite bat out the five overs. 60 for five, and it's all over. It's a decent effort, Bobat, from the Birmingham Bears and down Mousley. With the controller in hand, we've seen some expansive shots, some beautiful timing, boundaries, placement, and some good running in there as well. I think. 61 as a target inside five overs, that's not going to be easy. Top scoring in the innings, Ian Bell, with that 18 from six deliveries, eventually Stuart Broad getting his man. And the target for Tom Moores of Nottinghamshire, both sides, just to remind you, looking for their first win of this campaign. The target for victory, 61, as Alex Hale strides to the middle, alongside Tom Moores himself, I like that, confidence from the man in charge of things. And we're going to see Craig Miles holding this first over for the Birmingham Bears. Mousley with Miles bowling. And that's a delivery that gets the batsman in all sorts of bother. Alex Hales driving. Off an inside edge into the leg side. And just a single take. In fact, there was no edge. Leg by signal, so straight into the body of Alex Hales. And Tom Moore's left-hander will be on strike. 60 needed from 29 deliveries. That's the equation we can see on our screens. Moore's waiting. Moore sees a full delivery driven as far as mid-off. Quick single take and dive comes in. Good running. They need to take every single run they can get here. Big target. And a slow start. Well, it can be terminal in a run chase because you've got so little time to get things back. Hales on strike. Full delivery, hit well, yep. into the offside, that's a good connection from Hales, it goes out towards the Hollies, a couple of bounces into the ropes, and they're up and running knots. Hales just seeing that ball over pitch to touch, and though it swung in towards the right-hander, he trusted the swing of the blade, and away it went. Six without loss, 55 from 27. My maths tells me that's just over two runs a ball. Hales, he's a shorter ball this time, go right through and through to the keeper, that's good bowling. Mousley mixing things up, Moores just not picking it. Hales, four from three. And this has been a really good start from Miles with the ball. Again, it gets a little bit tangly for Alex Hales, and the single is taken, but nothing more than that. Again, actually, it's leg by signal, so Hales struggling to get bat and ball here. Seven without loss, final ball of the over. 54 still needed from 25 deliveries. Miles is in, and it goes through to the keeper. Moore's unable to get anything on it. And what a start that is with the ball from the Birmingham Bears. Real good variation in length, look at that. That one full delivery, that very full delivery, is the one boundary. But a good start from the Bears, Oliver Hammond-Dolby, experienced campaigner. This idiosyncratic approach is in immediately. Short delivery, punched off the back foot, nicely timed. But there's a fielder waiting in the covers. And it's just going to be a single to start the over. Hales and Tom Moores just struggling to get things moving, but it doesn't take long to catch up in this format. Moores, the left-hander on strike, as Hannah Dolby is in. Short delivery through to the keeper, and that'll surely be signaled wide, will it, by the umpire? Looked a little leg side ish and it looked a little short, but no, just one for the over, says our bearded umpiring friend in front of us here. 53 from 22 required. Driven without much timing into the leg side. Fielder runs round to collect. Just the one run. The pressure just beginning to mount. What they'd give for a boundary here. Just a bit of confusion there on the run. No harm done. Not nine without loss. They need runs. Hales, well, he's got the power, we know that. What a career he's had in white ball cricket. He sees the opportunity here, that's a full delivery outside the off stump. And that has been brutally put away by Alex Hales. Into the stands it goes. Field up inside the circle in the offside, and Alex Hales says, yeah, that's my sort of area. And smashes it away for six. 15 without loss, Hales is on to 11. 
full delivery. Swung at, missed. He's a pull for OBW. Perhaps there's just a little tick of an edge, but no, the umpire not interested. Will they go upstairs and look to and we'll use that review? Hammond will be in consultation with keeper and captain, says no eventually. And the final ball will be over. Hales waiting, on leg stump, hit in the air, there's fielders out there, could it be a chance for catch? No, six into the stand, heading towards the pavilion it goes, and Alex Hales, well he's finding his range now, two sixes in the over from Hannon Dolby. And suddenly there's sinking to do for Dan Mousley and the Birmingham Bears. Tom Moores just finding his groove, good looking game this. After those... Horrible scores from Laws, 9 and 17 in previous matches. And he's passed that inside of two overs. Moores waits. He's Dom Sibley into the attack. This is hit down the ground. Could be a chance of a catch, could it? Fielder running round into the deep. It goes just over that fielder. Running round from mid-off. Just about clears that rope and it's six. Moores timing it perfectly, but getting six runs in his first boundary. 34 needed from 17, exactly two a delivery. Change of angle from Tom Sibley. He does bowl, but he's not exactly well known for it. Next delivery, drop back of a length, hit down the ground again, better connection from Tom Moores, that's gonna be six runs. Down the ground it goes, into the stand. And the decision to bring Dom Sibley into the attack, a little bit of spin, pace off the ball. Well, it's not yielding results at the moment. Mousley will feel there is work to do in this over to try and recover things. The pressure on now, with Moores looking suddenly in excellent touch. 28 needed from 16. This is driven as far as the fielder in the covers. Single is taken, but nothing more. A decent recovery, just speared in with a bit more pace from Dom Sibley. Alex Hales on 17. Dangerous player. Waiting, chipping the ball in the air, could be a chance of a catch. Miles is running round. Does he get there? Yes, he does. Yeah. The wicket of Alex Hales goes. It's a big wicket as well. The first ball he faces from Dom Sibley, and though we saw the boundaries earlier in the over, Dan Mousley will feel this is a gamble that has paid off because the wicket of Alex Hales is a huge one. And Sibley can celebrate, as can the Birmingham Bears, because Alex Hales goes. And Dan Christian strides to the middle. Well, just a little bit of work to do. And knows he's got to hit the ground running here. 34 for one. Christian waits for Sibley. First ball he faces. Chipped in the air. Similar sort of shot. Similar outcome will it be? Miles coming in again. Yes, it is. Yeah. Dan Christian goes first ball. The same combination. Miles takes the catch. Sibley gets the acclaim. And it's two and two. And Tom Sibley's on a hat trick. in the air it went not much work to do this time for miles just stood wait check the watch and down the ball comes you can see how annoyed dan christian is experienced player but tom moores will have to do without him as ben duckett who won t20 blast competitions on this very ground with north hans won't be in strike though because the batter's crossed moores drives that's a good connection that's going to run to the ropes really nice play and a dramatic over that saw two sixes to start things. Then the wickets of Hales and Christian concludes with Tom Moores just putting a little bit of the brakes on the charge of the Birmingham Bears with a boundary to bring the score to 38 for two. 12 balls left in the game, 23 runs needed. What a game we've got here. Ben Duckett waits, driving in the air, but it's going to drop just short of the fielder. Sibley, who's in the action all the time, it feels. Who's waiting inside the circle in a shortish mid-off? Single taken. Two left-handers at the crease. Tom Moores on 19. Waiting for Jeetan Patel, the Birmingham Bears captain, who's coming round the wicket now. Driven. Again, the timing's not perfect. And a good stop from Sibley waiting in the covers. It'll be one more run. And 22 needed. From just or 21 I should say from just 10 deliveries now 40 for two is the score 
hit hard into the offside. Lovely connection from Duckett. That's going to be four. Crashes into the sponge now. And Ben Duckett with beautiful timing. Just eases some of the nerves in the Nottinghamshire dressing room. Lovely placement, lovely timing. Tom Moores at the controls. We'll feel a little more settled now. 17 needed from nine. Duckett has five from two. Next delivery, Duckett hits that even cleaner. Down the ground it goes for six. Beautiful connection from Ben Duckett. The England and Nottinghamshire man showing his quality. Full delivery from Patel and throwing everything at it. Ben Duckett suddenly swings this game towards Knox. Next ball hit again from Duckett. Beautiful connection once more. And that's going to be the same outcome. And Ben Duckett is winning this game on his own here. He's come to the crease with still plenty of work to do and pressure on with those two wickets in the previous over. But three boundaries in succession, the last two of them sixes. And it's now just five from seven. And the next ball's bowled in. Well, just as it looked as though this game was coming to its conclusion, Jeetan Patel gets one to nick through and off stumps out of the ground. So we do go to the last over, and Ben Duckett's hand has been a vital one. 17 runs in double quick time. But perhaps there is just a little bit of a twist in the tail of this fixture. Because Dan Mousley, bowling with Jeetan Patel, has got the wicket of Ben Duckett. And still with five needed, Samit Patel comes to the middle. Will Rhodes is going to bowl the final over of the innings. Five needed from six balls. Tom Moore's at the controls and up the crease. Driving. Into the offside it goes. Single taken. Good running. He knows here, Tom Moore's. He can do this in singles. There's not the pressure to play the big stroke. He's got that two wicket in hand advantage as well. If he loses one, it's not game over. Samit Patel waiting for his first ball. Driving. Good connection from Patel. It's well stopped though in the covers. And the match continues. That was almost, almost a moment. Three needed, four deliveries. Tom Moores on strike. He's on 21. Beaten by a delivery that goes right through. Dot ball. And that makes the equation three from three. We're not going to see a super over, are we? Moores has been here throughout. Opened the batting. Leading the charge on 21. Three needed. Driven through the offside. Lovely timing. That'll do it. Four runs to win the game for Nottinghamshire. Tom Moores can celebrate the first win of the campaign in this quarantine cup in Group 1 for Nottinghamshire. And Moores, well, he backed himself at the top of the order. And why not? 25 not out to win the game. And victory for Notts, who, having been bowled out for 9 and 17 in previous matches, well, they've shown vast improvement at Edgbaston to win this game. For the Birmingham Bears, it's more disappointment. Nottingham shall win this game by two wickets. And they can depart with at least a little bit of pride restored. Neither of these sides can qualify for the knockout stages of the tournament. But there's certainly something to play for. That's everything from Edgbaston. Plenty more, though, to come in the Quarantine Cup. Another fixture for you today, 5 o'clock. It's Kent against Leicestershire. So make sure you don't miss that one as things hot up in Group 2. Right. So I'm here with the victorious Tom Moores. It sounds very strange to say that, Tom. After being bowled out for 9 and 17, you've suddenly gone and come good as you promised. You must feel great. I feel amazing, yeah. It's, it's you know... That is that is the true that's the true Tom Moore's on cricket night. That's what you've just witnessed. Um, you know, um, you've got to you know be a humble winner. But you know, um, I think I put on a clinic. <laughs> I think you know the the ball striking was just unstoppable. Um, and you know, Dan credit to Danny played well, but um, I've got to back my, I've got to back myself this game. It's uh, it really did come out the middle of the screws. You did promise us that you would put on something like a clinic, and you've chased down a pretty big target there. It's a shame that it's come at a point where you're already eliminated, really. Yeah, see, I think I'm 
what I was trying to do is I was trying to make the tournament a little bit harder for myself at the start, I think. So I wanted to put myself under a bit more pressure than everyone else. Lose the first couple, but I misjudged what happened in the tournament and I've got myself eliminated, um, which is just real game. Um, but, you know, that that is... Um, I, I had to leave everyone on a, on a good note. And, uh, you know, I hope you I hope you enjoyed the game and all the fans that were watching. I think there was, I think there was quite a few watching. Um, <laughs> Not sure how many. I think you got the numbers there. I think there's a lot on there. Oh, several um, thousand, I heard. Possibly so, millions. Yeah. Millions. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I really, really turned it up for them, for them people. Well, you've um, still got one game left against uh, Ricardo at Northamptonshire. So an opportunity to, to go out on a real high. Oh, beautiful. And it's a sellout, isn't it, I think? So, I think they've sold out four times, yeah. I think they've actually <laughs> built a ground extension at Trent Bridge to be able to, to watch you play, which is good. Beautiful. Well, Double the score I've just got then. That's that's we're going we're gonna get the first century of the tournament I think, um, and I look forward to it. Okay, big words from you there, Tom. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. So Dan, Warwickshire looks like they were coasting in this one. A great score up front, um, and then it it all sort of went wrong in the back end of the bowling innings. So what happened? Um, I have no idea, Sam. Uh, I don't even think Wolsey has any idea what actually happened in that game of cricket. Um, it must have been a fast man, like 65 played 65, whatever it was. Yeah, and he absolutely cruised down. I didn't help, my, didn't help myself by selecting the team and then running out of time. It's not ideal. Um, and I went into the game having four... Uh, three out and out bowlers, and then an all rounder and a um, so say part timer. Um, yeah, that didn't help me, so I ended up having really struggle. Well, I posted a good score with the bat, got a bit of whack, uh, and then with the ball, it was a shambles, to be honest. I heard that some of the members were heckling you at one point uh, during that game. What did you make of that? Uh, it's one of those things in professional sport, isn't it? You've got to take it on the chin. Um, I reckon I'll be called for Mosley out on this at the end of this quarantine cup. Um, and I'm going to stay quiet on that. I want to take the club forward. I want to uh, I want to perform my best. And obviously, um, there's been some, there's been some uh, rough parts of the road so far, but I can see I can see there's a lot of positives going forward. Like that uh, about as a Imposing good scores nowadays, and um, yeah, they, we just need to have put a full game of cricket together. A look then at how that affects the Group 1 standings, and obviously very little both sides there at the bottom of the table and previously eliminated prior to today's match. Nottinghamshire, though, are off the mark with a win. Two points to them, Warwickshire winless after four. That's just about all we've got time for for your first part of today's double header. Don't forget, join us again at five o'clock in a much more important game with meaningful consequences in Group 2. Kent and Leicestershire, Imran Kayum and Hassan Azad, join us in just a few minutes.
Beckett, our national treasure? Or dying irrelevance? Bodyline, tactical genius? Or national disgrace? The hundred, inspired innovation? Or misguided mistake? Join the cricket conversation with a subscription to the Cricketer magazine.